Hey guys, that's Rock KJ here. Before we go any further, make sure you subscribe to my channel to never miss out on any of my upcoming missions. And my new children's book, A World of Big Trucks, is out now. You can get it by going to my website, thattruckkj.com, or, click or clicking the link in my bio. Because I don't want them to stay for prizes. You know what I mean? I want them to listen to the about the equipment. It doesn't matter that we're giving away very expensive, very good things. I'm not going to talk about that. I'm not going to say, hey, say, because you know we're going to give you stuff. All right. Come on back, Josh. Good luck, Fred. While they're getting this stuff into position, uh, we're going to talk about the Miller LCG carriers. But uh, so what's kind of unique about some of those Miller chassis, the way they're spec'd out. Uh, most of them are going to come with automatic, air ride, 22.5 rubber, that kind of combination. And then exclusive to those Miller chassis that are Cummins powered, they have a five year, hundred or 300,000 mile engine warranty, which covers your injectors, covers electronics, it covers the, uh, the uh, after treatment, which is very expensive, if, if you know, if you got a problem with that, it's real easy to have a five, ten thousand dollar repair bill on that right away. Control all the functions on this remote. Makes it easy to be able to do a couple things at once. You, know, you may be getting in your toolbox while you're running something down. We got the bed out of the locks. This is where it should be tilted, right here, to get that stabilizer on the ground. Because the carrier is designed to travel that load up and down that full length subframe from the end of the deck up to the stabilizer. That way it goes from the stabilizer up to the rear axle and in between the two axles of the truck. If you're one of those guys that's running that all the way out and that's when you're tilting and lowering that bed, you need to revisit your plan there because that puts a tremendous amount of stress up here on the rails when you're doing that because it lets you have some 10 foot of overhang out there to work against you. It imposes a lot of force up here that's unnecessary. One of the other unique things about the Miller Carrier is that full length subframe. You see that subframe comes all the way up to the front of the deck. When it's going down the road and it's loaded with five, six, seven, ten thousand pounds, it's full, the deck is fully supported with that subframe. You're gonna see a lot of manufacturers out there where that may stop right here. So what's supporting all that weight here? The other thing it does is the longer the subframe is, the more surface area that we have for that bed to travel on, so more surface area is less friction, it's less wear and tear. Unique features on this we talked about was the slide winder winch. Uh, today, they don't want us to hook up to A-arms and J-hooks and chains from the suspension and stuff. So a lot of the cars are getting outfitted with a tow eye. Tow eye is stored back in the trunk with the spare tire tools. And it could be on either side, it could be in the middle. This winch allows us several different positions across the front of the carrier to put that cable right in line with that pull pin, regardless of location. That minimizes any side load on it. Once we get pulling it up the deck, it's not torquing the front of the car or torquing that uh, pin or taking the chance of breaking or side loading. It. So you so just to get an idea of the advantage and how what we're gaining by that approach plate, we'll leave it in the stock configuration. You ready there, Josh? And we can see in a conventional deck, right around here, we're gonna to start to get to a pretty tight clearance. I'll raise that up. You'll notice I don't really have to do anything. I didn't unlock any locks, I didn't turn any levers, I didn't do anything. It's a passive operation that once we raise the deck up, it hinges here, and then, once we go forward, and that's in the flat position, there are two big arms that lock that tail into place as it gets up here into the subframe. So once it's going down the road, that tail's locked into place like a solid deck. So we've created that clearance. And once we get the tires on, we're good. That's the critical part. Once the tires climb on there, that raises the spoiler up as well. Now we get to this deck. This stuff, right? Let me feather that. Up. Okay. 
Now we've seen some of the other decks over here, like the SST and the Load Right, that have a dual angle to them that takes three and a half degrees off of the main deck. That's kind of where we're at here. The additional advantage that we've got with the right approach is once we get into here, we had to make this deck a little steeper to get down to that angle. Continue to winch it up onto the deck with plenty of clearance. Cars are on the deck. This car isn't too bad, but sometimes you've got a problem back here with exhaust or overhang. If I raise that deck back up again, what happens to my clearance back here? Go ahead and raise it up. Good. I'll turn it off. Before we get it all the way up, I want to point out the other option that's on here is the over-the-tire tie-down. This comes with the two chalks that we can place into one of these three positions. Pull the tire up against that, it stops, you know you're where you need to be, and then you can run your strap over the top like we're going to show here. Right there. Greg's going to show you on the uh, over the tire. Goes into the key slot right there in the front. This swivel allows us to get that into the rear. Go forward here. Now again, we slid that weight up. Stabilizer still on the ground. Now that weight's up in between the front and the rear. Lower that bed down. and then slide it up into the bed lock. Miller Industries does use a mechanical lock up there to lock that bed down. Now that's not to keep the bed down from flying up in the air when you go down the road, but what it does do, if this vehicle was into an accident or something like that or had to make quick maneuvers, instead of having some 18 feet of leverage to the pivot pin that could spin that bed or torque something around, it locks it in solid up here so that it can't be able to do that. When it's on the ground, so that's reach measured from here to the front of the grid. Gives us plenty of reach for vehicles that have a long overhang. You also notice that it's got a very good low angle here in clearance to be able to drive a vehicle up over the top of that and air dams and spoilers and things like that. Hey Jay, check this out. That's an interesting way to put the cone down, huh? Wait a minute, no one's controlling that. Someone's controlling it from somewhere.
car and you're towing a trailer, you want to make sure you always load 60% of your load in the front and 40 in the back. We don't want it too heavy in the front, or and we definitely don't want it too heavy in the back. So you want to wear your seatbelt, go the speed limit. So right now you're loaded correctly. So let's say you something runs across the street and you have to make a sharp turn. So go ahead, you can turn a sharp. There you go. The trailer's staying right behind you. Maybe you hit a bump or a pothole. All right, so you're doing great. Now, if you had loaded incorrectly and you put way too much weight in the back, driving. All right, what if you have to make a sharp turn now? Losing a little control. Go over a bump. And all of a sudden, a little bit of sway turns into whipping, which is very, very dangerous. It's hard to get out of. So we all always just want to make sure that we're going the speed limit, we load heavier in front, and wear your seatbelt because somebody next to you might be loading incorrectly too. Good driving.